Hi, I'm Slam Gaming. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love Johto and I am a sick, sick man. So I'm starting a new eight part series where I'm going to see how long it takes to win with every Johto gym leader's team in the Master Ball tier of Scarlet and Violet. Part one, we're starting in Violet City with everyone's favorite bird keeper with dad issues, Faulkner. So thanks to Dexit, I do not have access to all of Faulkner's Pokemon. In fact, I have access to none of his team as it currently stands, as the Pidgey line is not in Scarlet and Violet. Thanks for watching. Just kidding. It's time to break out the workarounds, because we'll need them for later gym leaders too. Every gym leader before Gen 6 makes an appearance in the Pokemon World Tour in Black 2 and White 2, where they have full teams of 6. This is a huge advantage, as it gives me more options, and also, a lot of the gym leaders in the early game only have like 3 or 4 Pokemon total, and having a full team of 6 will give me more of a fighting chance on the ladder. When given a choice though, I will prioritize team members used in the actual gyms. That's just preference for me. So, Faulkner. From the rematch battles in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, we get Staraptor, Noctowl, Honchcrow, and Pelipper. From the Pokemon World Tour battles, we get. nothing new. <sighs> Was this a mistake? Probably. Okay, time for a really quick team breakdown. I need damage output, and bad. Honchcrow seems like a good candidate for that, with the Moxie ability. A Life Orb is also going to maximize that damage output. Sucker Punch is good priority as well, and Terra Steel is useful for defensive purposes. Staraptor is also pretty strong, but I want it to double as an Intimidate Cycler if I need it to. Focus Sash will increase longevity, but it does make Brave Bird basically unusable, and Dual Wing Beat sucks, but it'll have to do. Knocked Owl is very… blah. I love the design, but it has abysmal stats by modern standards. Instead of using Hypnosis and trying to get lucky, which was probably the better idea in hindsight, I went in a very different direction with a nasty plot attacking set. Wikiberry and Terra Fairy finished the set, but they were kind of arbitrary decisions. Finally, Pelipper is a pure supporting set, with a Citrus Berry for extra bulk. I wish other team members could use the rain, but alas. Not the hand I was dealt. Thanks for nothing, Faulkner. And that's it. Now, well, at least I don't have to waste time choosing which four to bring. I've gotta be honest, I wasn't sure at this point if this was possible at all. These team members are really weak, and the current meta is super strong and often pretty tanky. But it's time to jump in, whatever may come. Let me know how many games you think it's going to take me to win. Five? Ten? A hundred? And also, if you enjoyed this video at any time, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps a lot. Alright, I know that we're really here to see me win, but before we do, I need to pay homage to the time I lost to the losing battles. So here is the losing montage with Faulkner's team. And there was plenty. Well, it did happen eventually, but I won't reveal the final number of games until the end. Let's get into the winning game. Immediately, we have a problem. Well, two problems. Iron Hands and Iron Bundle might be our worst two matchups, and we have both in front of us right now. I lead Haunch Crow Staraptor to try to get offense going early. Intimidate on Iron Hands is nice, but any electric moves are still going to be devastating. I double protect to avoid fake out, and am confused by Icy Wind from Bundle. I would just be focusing down one Pokemon. But what do I know, I'm using Faulkner's team on the ladder. I decide to commit my Terra early, and allow Honchcrow to change to the Steel type. 
but this does open me up to drain punches from Iron Hands down the line. My Terra immediately pays off, as Freeze Dry from Bundle bounces off, and I am surprised as Staraptor KOs the Iron Bundle with a close combat. I forget how frail Iron Bundle can be sometimes. Honchcrow gets some chip off with Drill Peck, and then Wild Charge brings Staraptor down to Focus Sash. Okay, that was a decent turn. Bundle being gone is huge too. Heatran comes in, and I'm feeling okay. Pelipper will be really nice into Heatran, but Honchcrow is now in immediate danger to Heatwave. I make a really nice play next turn, and cover for the Heatran Protect by bringing in Pelipper for Honchcrow and close combating the Iron Hands with Staraptor. Staraptor does go down to a heavy slam, but Iron Hands is dangerously close to fainting now, and that is one of the last big obstacles for my team. I decide that Noctowl needs to come out now, as Honchcrow is still at far too much risk in front of these two. My opponent tears their Heatran to Grass-type, which I still find quite confusing. Sure, Pelipper is posing a threat with water attacks, but the entirety of my team is Flying-type, which seems like a bigger problem. I go all in and use Helping Hand with Pelipper. After sponging a Flash Cannon from Heatran, a Moonblast from Knockdown knocks out the Iron Hands. There are only two Pokemon left on the opposing side, and I really started to get nervous here. It feels more doable than ever. And even better, the last Pokemon to come out from my opponent is Ogre Pond, which means that both of the last Pokemon I have to KO are weak to flying type moves. I decide now is the right time to set up a Tailwind to give me the attacking priority. And that pays off immediately, as I take no damage on the turn, as Ogre Pond attacks into a Protect. Now I do something really stupid, and I think that I can use Chilling Water on Ogre Pond to reduce its attack. But Ogre Pond Wellspring's ability is Water Absorb, which means that not only do I not lower its attack, but I heal back the damage I did with Moonblast from Noctowl. Am I really gonna throw this? Flash Cannon from Heatran brings me into the red, but I have a wiki berry that I completely forgot about, and now I am back to about half HP with Knocked Owl. Super clutch berry. From a game state perspective, my clear win condition is getting Honchcrow back into the game with only one Pokemon left on my opponent's side. Tailwind being up is also a must, as I'm not sure if I will outspeed whichever opponent is left. The opponent double protects, and now rain is over. That shouldn't affect too much, but Heatran now does have some other options. I'm shocked at how much a helping hand Hyper Voice does. One more of those and Ogre Pond is gone. Ivy Cudgel from Ogre Pond is a hard read that I will switch, but it doesn't pay off, and Heatran's Heat Wave doesn't knock out anyone on my side. I decide to protect with Noctowl and reset the Tailwind with Pelipper, but Horn Leech does way more than I thought it would. Can Heatran knock me out and lose me the game? No, because I have another berry I forgot about, a Citrus on Pelipper. You can really tell how comfortable and familiar I am with this team based on how much I'm forgetting these berries. For good measure, Heatwave misses from Heatran. Another helping hand Hyper Voice brings Heatran below half, and Pelipper dodges another Heatwave. But it's time for Honchcrow to come into the battle, whether it wants to or not. But the keen-eyed among you may have seen that I've lost, right? Heatran will go for Heatwave again, and I can't knock out both opponents at once. Honchcrow will go down, and Pelipper can never KO Ogre Pond. But I have one last card up my sleeve, and I go for Wide Guard with Pelipper. Drill Peck knocks out Ogre Pond, Heatwave is blocked by Pelipper, and we have won. There's a couple more turns of stalling, but eventually a plus one, helping hand boosted drill peck KOs the Heatran and gets Faulkner a win in the Master Ball tier. And you know what the craziest part is? Heatran had Earth Power, which means that if it had just gone for that instead of Heatwave on the turn I blocked it with Wide Guard, I would have lost. Maybe they thought it wouldn't KO without Stab, but I did the calc, it would have KO'd from full HP even. But that's just how the lava cookie crumbles sometimes, and I will take it. All right, last order of business. How long did it take me to win with Faulkner's team in the Master Ball tier? Including the winning battle, 
it took me four battles. Pretty good, right? Especially for such a limited team. Also, I'm going to be tiering all of the gym leaders based on how fun their teams were to use. And Faulkner unfortunately starts us out with a D tier. Only four Pokemon is brutal, and the secondary types are not diverse enough. Also, there just aren't really any fun and unique strategies to be made. It's just kind of one note and you throw it against the wall until you eventually break through. Okay, so that's Gym Leader 1. Seven more to go. If you enjoyed and you want to see Bugsy next, liking and subscribing helps a lot. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Slam Gaming, and have a great rest of your day. See you next time.